Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to talk about the possibility that Games Workshop is kind of missing out on a fairly, well, maybe not fairly significant market, but a not insignificant market. And this is off the back of me basically looking around for D&D miniatures, which is obviously not the same as Warhammer 40k, but I have used Warhammer 40,000 miniatures for games of D&D, uh, most notably my... Uh, massive half-orc uh, paladin with a giant maul that is neve black talon from age of sigma um and uh and this chap who is was a goliath barbarian he's dead now sadly um but again that is a corn slaughter piece from age of sigma uh i've used parts of the um i think it's the is it the blood reavers the blood some things the some things of blood the blood guys from age of sigma as like mobs as NPCs, uh, my wife's character, which is on the shelf back there, is in fact one of those guys. Um, and all the while that I've been looking at D and D stuff, I've consistently found that in terms of quality, Games Workshop is right up there. Games Workshop is all the way up there in terms of how good the models look, how well designed they are, the actual quality of the final sculpt, the the product itself is pretty much spot on. I mean, this guy it is a it's a quality model. The detail is fantastic, and it it came out really, really well. It's it's just a good model all around. And the more I looked at this stuff, the more I found that there was one specific, one particular niche that Games Workshop seems to have completely missed in every respect, and that is the female model. Now, we've talked about how Games Workshop want to get more women into the hobby before, and we've talked about ways they could possibly do that by you know, expanding the Imperial Guard sets so that the men and women, men and women of the Imperial Guard uh, are actually men and women as opposed to just men. Um, there's plenty of other things that they could do in terms of expanding the model range. They could actually update sources of battle, for God's sake. We've talked about this before. But it's not really until I looked at the overall catalogue, both for 40k and for Age of Sigma, that I kind of realised that there is... There is quite a big market for female miniatures, not just for fantasy stuff, but also for 40k stuff as well. When you look at things like, again, going back to the Imperial Guard example, I see so many, so many third-party Commissar models, which are female. There's loads of them. People really like that that element of the Imperial Guard. They really like using that. I mean, Victoria Miniatures has an entire range of female imperial guard and they're popular because i keep seeing people posting their imperial guard armies which consist of just imperial guard tanks and everything else is a third party miniature and saying hey this is my army games workshop don't do these models so i had to go somewhere else i was looking on bolter and chainsaw the other day and i saw a thread that i'd missed which is yet another company that has started up with a kickstarter producing sci-fi 40k style models which are female and it's all kind of come to me as a as a realization that games workshop seem to have completely missed that side of their own their own product they seem to have completely missed that aspect of the thing that they are famous for i mean games workshop make warhammer whether it's warhammer fantasy or age of sigma or warhammer 40,000 their biggest claim to fame are those game systems are those models and yet within that framework there is a genuinely baffling lack of well female miniatures now it could just be that up until this point female miniatures just weren't that popular there was no point producing there's no point making them because overall the level of interest the level of um of, of like desire for them maybe desire is the wrong word um it just wasn't there maybe it's just a case of well we did look at it but these models sell really well we've seen third-party companies only make you know exclusively female managers and they didn't do very well but that time seems to have changed and it's not just things like imperial guard i've seen countless um i'm trying to remember what website it is but there is uh oh, it's not high-tech miniatures it's I can't remember. I'll put a link in the description to it because I've actually bought something from this place. There's a uh, there's a company that does a bunch of tech priests, a female tech priest. Now again, this is another area where it's like 
there is an entire book in the Horus Heresy series that talks about a female tech priest, a visionary female tech priest, and yet there's no hint of that at all when it comes to the tabletop game. It's kind of established at this point that you can have them, but Games Workshop don't make them, and so a third party company steps in. I'm genuinely curious as to why it is that there is a seeming lack of interest from Games Workshop themselves in trying to expand into that market. Because you'd think that, for a start, it wouldn't be that hard. Let's be honest. I mean, especially now, we have things like the the uh, the House Escher models, which are really, really well done. They're really good sculpts. They're a little bit niche. They don't have a huge number of applications outside of 40k, which obviously Games Workshop don't really care about that side of things. You know, people buying miniatures for other game systems from them are probably well in the minority behind people who are buying them either to play with that game system or as a proxy in a game system that is also part of Games Workshop. But there's still a growing and almost entirely ignored by Games Workshop section of people who want female versions of what Games Workshop already produces. And the bit that confuses me is that these aren't miniatures that don't make sense in terms of the internal law for Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigma or Warhammer Fantasy. The vast majority of them are not things that are contradictory to what Games Workshop has written. They're not contradictory to the overall story. I'm not seeing, you know, loads of people going, look, I really, 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 really need to see female space marines right now. Link me some female space marines. I see countless people asking for third-party versions of Sisters of Battle, which should be a large hint to begin with. I see countless people asking for third-party versions of Imperial Guard, of Adeptus Mechanicus, there's there's a load of stuff like even things like um like the Eldar. Things like Farseers and Warlocks. There's quite a lot of stuff out there now that are female versions of those models. Now, you could argue that actually just looking at them, there's not really that much of a way to tell what with the heavy robes and all that going on. But there's obviously some form of market for it that Games Workshop is still ignoring. The thing that gets me most when I think about this, the thing that confuses me the most, is an example that um, I, I like. me and Arch talked about. I did a video with Arch Warhammer, which you probably already know about, but if you don't, I'll link it in the description, where we talked about the Stormcast Eternals and Age of Sigma, which undoubtedly are a success. No one can look at that and say that was a failed product and that was a failed launch because they have sold massive and they continue to receive huge support from Games Workshop. And... I mean, we know what happens if a product doesn't receive huge support. They just don't do it anymore. Whereas Stormcast still gets supported a lot. The way that Stormcast Eternals were pitched, to me, or, or at least as I understand it, were that they were spirits loyal to Sigma. They weren't really male or female. They were just spirits that were given armor and weapons and sent off to fight. Since then, things have changed slightly. And we're now seeing things like female Stormcast, only two, in the form of Neve Black Talon and whatever the other one's called. I can't remember. It's the one from, uh, actually, it's the one from Shades by. I could look at the box, but I won't. Um, and for me, the Stormcast Eternals were like the prime point at which to introduce armoured female models, to gauge the interest in that particular side of things, to have a a completely new faction with no established law where they could actually sit there and go okay let's see how people react to this let's see how people like this you didn't even have to do it 50 50 you could do it 70 percent men 30 percent women or even 75 25 or even 80 20 but they didn't do it instead they looked at it and went okay we're not specifically declared that these have to be men but they're all going to be male anyway that is weird for a start because that suggests that a whole bunch of people who went through that process of coming up with Stormcast Eternals, not one of them kind of went, hang on a second, is there any reason why they can't be female? Is there any reason we can't do that? But it also is a little bit worrying because it seems to show a genuine reluctance from Games Workshop to actually try and branch out 
to actually try and approach this market that exists for their own products. It's not a case of people who are going, I just want female miniatures for the sheer hell of it. I just want them for the sheer sake of it. They're regularly being bought and used as proxies for Games Workshop's own products. They are regularly being substituted. They're regularly being put there in place of things that Games Workshop could make themselves, but don't. And for the life of me, I cannot work out why. I cannot fathom a point where you would sit there and look at an expanding market of third-party miniature makers who are filling a niche that you could fill yourself with ease, but you just don't do it. And the more I think about it, the less I can kind of work out why that would be the case. Now, things are changing a little bit. We do now have the Daughters of Cain, we've got Marathi, her lots turned up, and those are overwhelmingly female miniatures, which genuinely, I, you know, you can read into this what you like. I mean, I am of the opinion that if something looks good, I like the fact that it's there. I'm, I'm not too... I don't particularly care for any agenda in terms of we must have this now for it's the only way for things to be fair. I'm a lot more... I, I guess I'm a lot more sort of story driven than cause driven. If there's a a compelling narrative reason for something, then I can generally find my way around it and go, okay, no, I can see that. I like that. And I'm also just one of those people who just likes nice models. And the Daughters of Cain stuff, the uh, the the new Marathi model, those are to me nice models. The fact that they're female is like an added bonus because it simply shows that Games Workshop are maybe now starting to appreciate that oh wait, there is a market for female fantasy miniatures. There is a market for female sci-fi miniatures. But why is it taking this long? <laughs> That's the thing that's getting me. Like, Why is it taken as long as it has? Even down to recent examples with things like the Adeptus Custodes. Custodes. I will get there eventually. I, 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 I slip all the time. Um, now, before, they were sold in the Towns of the Emperor box with the Sisters of Silence. And then the Codex came out and the Sister of Silence were nowhere near it. Again, this is like a prime opportunity to expand a female model range, one of the few up-to-date female model ranges that you have, and produce like produce models that people are asking for in tandem with something else that they've been traditionally associated with. A, a relationship that no one would bat an eyelid at because that's just how those two armies work. And instead, we got the Adeptus Custodes Codex, and we didn't get anything for the Sisters of Silence. They were just left where they are, in this weird kind of limbo, with no Codex, like a kit, and that's about it. What, what is the deal? Why is Games Workshop seemingly so petrified of actually attempting to expand their range into a market that undeniably exists there's no real conclusion to this video if i'm honest i actually i'm posing this question this is a discussion it's not a it's not an essay it's not something where you're supposed to watch it and then at the end go i understand now because i don't understand and that's why i'm bringing it to you if you've got any ideas as to why they're being so slow to expand into a market that they should already be dominant in please let me know in the comments because it feels like they're being sluggish it feels like they're not committing to something when really there's no reason not to commit to it and understand i'm not talking about things like female space marines here i'm talking about the examples i made things like imperial guard things like expanded things for eldar and predators mechanicus i'm talking about things like stormcast eternals where are they why do they not exist why are we only now seeing the introduction of things like predominantly female armies in the form of the Marathi lot and why is the equivalent for 40k completely non-existent let me know what you think in the comments below maybe we can unpack this maybe there is a reason for it maybe there's something being saved up there's something in store that they'll spring on us and we'll be like oh my god that was the plan all along maybe not thank you very much for watching Leave a comment down below. As always, you can click the things on the screen. There's videos, subscribe, Patreon. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. Toodaloo.